God tells Moses, Moshe in this week's Torah portion, to appoint Joshua, Yehoshua, as the next leader of the Jewish people. The sages tell us that Moshe had actually been campaigning for his sons to take over his position as leader, not because of nepotism, but because he felt that they were the most appropriate successors for his job. And of course that's the case, because Moshe always put God and the Jewish people first. Why would he want his sons to take over such a thankless job? All the Jews did in the wilderness was complain. He wanted them to take over because he thought they were the best. But God had other plans. Why did Yehoshua get the job? Because he had an extra item on his resume. In addition to his personal piety and his Torah scholarship, he was the one that helped other people study. He was the guy that would get to the study hall or the study tent before anyone else and set up the couches and the chairs and the tables for others. Years before, it was a similar resume item that clinched the leadership position for Moshe. One day while he was tending the flock of his father-in-law Yisrael, one of the sheep was lagging behind. Moshe went to check on it, saw that it was sick, so he picked it up, put it over his shoulders, and carried it back to the flock. And up in heaven, God said, that's the person that I want to lead my flock. There's a mission in Pirkei Avos that tells us that if a person is awake at night or traveling alone, and turns his heart to idle matters, his soul bears responsibility. The classic explanation of that statement of the sages is that if someone fritters away time that's better or best spent learning Torah, he pays a steep spiritual price. But one commentator says that's not what the sages are talking about. They mean this. If a person is awake at night, awake in this dark world, but contrary to the beliefs of most other people, sees the light of God, the light of Torah, but travels alone, doesn't share that knowledge of the Torah's breadth and depth and beauty with others. Because he or she turns their thoughts, their hearts to idle matters, thinking it's not gonna matter, nobody's gonna listen anyway. They bear a steep spiritual price. And now we can understand one of the last debates that Moshe had with God. Moshe was trying to convince God to rescind his decree and to allow Moshe to enter the promised land. He said, God, let Yehoshua be the leader. I'll be in the back. I'll just be a regular Joe, a regular Mo. Just give me a small plot of land so that I can observe the agricultural laws and the other laws that can only be observed in the promised land. And God said, it doesn't work that way. You can't be a hermit. If I did that, if I allowed that, you'd still be Moshe with all of your wondrous talents and you'd have to use those talents to help others. We have to have the words of Judah, Yehuda, always ringing in our ears. The words that he spoke to the leader in Egypt, not realizing it was his brother Joseph, Yosef. When he was trying to convince him to allow their brother, Benjamin, Benjamin, to go home, he said, how can I go up to my father if the lad is not with me? We have to always ask ourselves, how can we go up to our father in heaven if the lad our children, Jewish youth, our friends are not with us.